guys, welcome to the Saturday DFS show. Here I'm going to give you the optimal players to start possibly in your DFS lineups. When I say possibly, I mean that is if you decide to do that because I'm giving you my my best researched opinion and it's up to you to plug in the right person, okay? That is up to you. And sometimes it comes down to gut feeling. Sometimes it goes to intuition. Sometimes it's based on matchup. But I'm giving you the optimal players at each position based on matchup and my opinion, who I think could be a good DFS play for week eight. Can you believe it? It's week eight. We're like halfway through the season now. That is absolutely insane. Now, I do have a huge announcement. I want to make you guys aware I am starting a new podcast. The podcast is going to be really unique in the sense that I'm going to be interviewing sports personalities, entrepreneurs, and people in the sports industry. It's going to be super exciting. I've got one show recorded already. I'm in the workings of getting more shows. We're going to get Chris Johnson, uh, CJ2K, as you know him, I'm trying to get him on the show, trying to get other celebrities on the show, talking sports in depth, talking goat talk, talking everything sports related, trending news. Everything sports, you're going to love this show. It's going to be interactive, it's going to be interview-based, and it's going to be totally, totally, like, I can't even explain it, like, free-flowing, that's the word I'm trying to find here. Free-flowing, I'm going to be open, I'm going to be talking raw, it's going to be amazing, it's going to be realistic, I'm going to push the guests to the limit, okay? So, in order to subscribe to that, head on over, guys, to Joe Camo Show. That's J O E K A M O Show. And I put that in Instagram. So just type in Joe Camo Show so you guys are up to date as to when uh, the first launch is going to be. And also, guys, there's a link here below to the YouTube channel, uh, Joe Camo Show. Okay, guys, real sports talk. I want you guys to subscribe. You're going to absolutely love it. I'm doing this for you guys. I want to deliver on a high level. And I love fantasy. I'm going to keep fantasy going, but I want to add another element uh, to my uh, sports analysis game. You guys are going to absolutely love it, okay? Joe Camo Show, stay tuned. It's going to be huge. And also follow on Flick Chat. There's a link below. We can chat during games. Super exciting. All right, so let's go. Quarterbacks, Teddy Bridgewater. He's already played. He was supposed to have an optimal matchup. And he had a pretty mediocre type week. Now, I want to tell you something here. It was Thursday night football. He played. He played Atlanta, and it was it wasn't the greatest performance. It wasn't a top notch. Oh my god! Now he had the easiest matchup versus position. The reason I'm talking about Teddy Bridgewater, even though the game is over, is because with Teddy, we saw that it was a mediocre performance, and he had the best matchup, arguably versus position. So when you look at a guy like that, you gotta wonder. Okay, well this guy had an optimal matchup but what happened right was it the offense was it the defense why did he only put up you know, i'm looking at this particular league i'm in he put up nine points in it uh so sometimes it's not based on matchup sometimes it's a gut feeling sometimes it's players go and break out that week right but he had the best matchup versus position and he didn't do that great just to let you guys know okay so some optimal plays here let's start off with the budget the most expensive pat mahomes eighty one hundred dollars he has a mid-range matchup not the easiest russell wilson versus san fran has a tough matchup eighth hardest versus position he is seventy eight hundred dollars so sometimes you don't have to spend the biggest budget because they have a tough matchup now russell wilson is solid all the way through he could be a guy you still could trust even though he's got a tough matchup versus the 49ers Aaron Rodgers actually has an easy matchup. Sixth easiest versus position against Minnesota. Definitely a guy you may want to consider. $7,600 is expensive. A guy like Lamar Jackson playing Steelers. Tough matchup. Sixth hardest versus position. He is $7,400. Do you want to start him? I probably would not, although he could have a big week. So let's give you some optimal plays here. Justin Herbert, optimal play here at position. Carson Wentz, $6,200. Decent value. He has a really good matchup versus Dallas. You may want to consider him coming off two red hot, red hot fantasy football weeks. Okay, may want to consider him. Nick Foles, not the greatest quarterback, right? Doesn't put up huge numbers. Has a decent matchup. Fourth easiest versus position. A value play Derek Carr. Another value play Jimmy Garoppolo, and a bonus value play Drew Lock. Also, all optimal pl- matchups versus position. Drew Lock particularly an easy matchup. Actually, second easiest versus position okay so that's something to be aware of when you're looking at quarterbacks you want to value play get it but i like to anchor my team with the best possible quarterback that i think is going to succeed go back and re-listen and you're going to know who the optimal players are if you if i'm going too fast for you okay optimal matchups versus position dalvin cook is supposed to play good matchup versus green bay although will he be 100 percent? we don't know so i'm concerned about dalvin cook even though he's got a good matchup i don't really trust him although he could go off I still have a hard time trusting him coming off that injury. You never know. So Madison's a bit of a better value play, but you never know. Cook could play the whole game. Madison could get like two touches 
and then you're screwed, right? So be careful there. Kareem Hunt, awesome play this week. Really, second easiest matchup versus position. $6,900 on DraftKings, expensive, but could put up some solid points. Has been mediocre the past three weeks. 19 points last week. I'd like to see a little bit more there. Jonathan Taylor, been mediocre as well. 16 points last week, 15 week, week before. Third easiest matchup versus position. Is he going to continue to get more volume? We don't know. We don't know. They're putting in Hines in there. Too much for me. I, I want to see Taylor run away with his job, but you know there's a problem there. I don't know if he's going to see as much volume as we think. Okay, Boston Scott. Miles Sanders should be out. I like Boston Scott as a value play. He's $6,000. It's not bad. Not bad. I mean, I don't have to spend $7,500 like Dalvin Cook, and I could get a guy that could have a boom-type game. So I like to plug him in on an easy matchup versus Dallas, a guy that could get some good volume this week. Other value plays here, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Not really much value, but $6,500 is not bad. And then you got Le'Veon Bell, who's fifty nine or sorry, uh, forty six hundred. There is a value play who is playing the Jets, Chiefs versus Jets, and I would imagine that Bell is probably going to get a little more reps, seeing that he is playing his old team. I'm I'm wondering if they're going to play him just for that reason alone, play him more. That is, so I would think that he could have a ceiling this game, but I think Clyde Edwards-Helaire is still the guy there. Okay, uh, Daryl Henderson, good matchup as well. Giovanni Bernard, I believe Mixon will be out again. So if Mixon's out, Bernard at fifty eight hundred, there's a value play here for you. I like him. Ronald Jones, not bad as well for fifty seven hundred dollars. He's got the twelfth easiest matchup versus position. Derek Henry. Kind of a mid-range matchup. He is expensive. He is $8,000. You may want to consider playing him against Cincinnati. They are not the greatest. I do like plugging him as a safe play as well. Now, if you want to value with upside, he didn't get as much volume as I thought he would. But A.J. Dillon at 4000 you might as well go Jamal Williams. He had a good game last week. He is $6,100, but again, a total wild card risk who could start getting integrated more is A.J. Dillon, but he did not see volume last week, okay? So be cautious with him. All right, so let's move on to the wide receiver position, some value plays, some optimal plays. Let's go through it at wide receiver going into NFL Week 8. Now understand, guys, we are halfway through. You should have an understanding as to who's kind of performing, who's not. You should have a good feel of it, okay? So it's up to you to make an executive and a smart decision to start the right people. Don't get upset if you start somebody and he's not performing. Look at trends, okay? Look at trends. How have they been doing? Are they playing well? Did they have a boom week last week? Maybe it was a boom week last week. Maybe they're going to decline this week. Perfect example. Sixth hardest matchup for his position, Tyler Lockett. Boom week last week. Do you start Tyler Lockett? He's $7,100. That's not cheap. That's very expensive. Or do you go Metcalf? Maybe Metcalf has a bigger week this week, right? So I'm tempted to go Metcalf and see the thing here. DraftKings knows this, right? They're smart. That's why they have Metcalf at $7,500 and Tyler Lockett at seventy one. Why isn't Lockett at $7,500? He had the better week, right? Because they know right? What goes up must come down. They they compensate. They look at trends, right? So it's up to you to spot those trends. So DK Metcalf, I think, is a smarter play, and you're going to have to pay for it, and they're making you pay for it, and that's that's the thing, right? These odd makers know what they're doing. Don't just follow the recency bias, okay? Uh, Allen Robinson's got a good matchup. Devontae Adams, very expensive. Great matchup against Minnesota, though, but $8,800, I don't know if I'm going to spend that. Okay, Tyler Boyd, right? Good matchup. So does T. Higgins. You may want to consider them. Optimal matchups. Uh, other good matchups here. Travis Fulgham. You may want to consider Travis Fulgham. Brandon Ayuk. Not a bad value play. $5,800, right? Uh, Jarvis Landry. I think he's banged up. But I think he should play. I think he is healthy. Let me see here. Yeah, he's healthy. Jarvis Landry. Good matchup against the Raiders, okay? Um, who else is here that's good? Uh, be careful. T.Y. Hilton's got a good match. He's playing Detroit. Some of the wide receivers there for Indy, but he's just not getting the volume. So you may want to consider another wide receiver on the team, but it's a roll of the dice there, okay? Nelson Aguilar, you may want to consider him. Second easiest matchup versus position. Not a bad value play of $4,700, being the guy that got 25 points last week and a kind of a prime target there, okay? Uh, any other value plays here I may consider? Maybe Greg Ward. Uh, from Philly, I don't trust Marquise Valdez scaling. You just can't catch the ball. You got to be careful. Look for guys that 
aren't performing, okay? But that pretty much wraps up uh, wide receivers here in regards to value plays that I trust. Let me give you guys a couple more options here. Now, there's some tough matchups, but you may still want to consider starting them, but it's up to you guys. It's a tough matchup. Like I said, DK Metcalf being one. Sterling Shepard coming off a hot week. Tougher matchup this week against Tampa Bay, but again, coming off a good week, someone's got to catch the ball there as well. And Chase Claypool, you may want to consider him as an upside player, but ninth hardest versus position, be cautious. But understand Deontay Johnson was a little banged up. I think he's going to be good to go, but I think Chase Claypool could be the guy this week. Again, we're looking at trends. What goes up must come down, okay? Let's take a look at the tight end position here. Then we're going to give you some defenses. Again, make sure you guys smash thumbs up. I'll try to get to as many questions as I can below. And I will try to answer some of them for you, okay? Uh, and again, go back. We did a starts and sits show. Go back, okay? All right, let's go to uh, tight ends. We'd look at a guy like Kittle, third easiest, third, third hardest matchup for his position against Seattle. He is expensive, but he produces. Now, he only had 11 points last week. Be cautious with him, right? He does have a tough matchup. Kelsey, mid-range matchup. You know, had a mediocre week last week. He is playing the Jets. Could be a guy that could boom this week. He is $6,600, okay? Noah Fant, $4,700, decent value play. Easier matchup. Jimmy Graham, second easy matchup for his position. $4,600, not bad there. Jared Cook, mid-range matchup, $4,400, not bad. Jano Smith, second easiest matchup. Optimal play, value, $4,100. Had a couple rough weeks. Two points last week, two weeks, two points the week before that. Jano Smith due for a breakout game, easy matchup. But again, big risk because he hasn't been consistent. Dalton Schultz, again, quarterback, suspect. Ben DiCucci starting. I call him DiCucci. It's DiNucci. I don't care. I call him DiCucci. He is playing. How is he going to gravitate? Is he going to gravitate to Schultz? Who knows? Schultz had a mediocre couple weeks, but an easy matchup versus vision. Make the decision. Anthony Frisker, three points last week, 28 points the week before. Not much consi- not much consistency there. Does have an easy matchup against Cincinnati. Do you start him? Do you not? You know, big risk there as well, okay? So again, it's up to you. A perfect example here of an optimal matchup did nothing. Ian Thomas, right? Like, what has that guy really done? I mean, he's been mediocre at best. Eight to ten points max, right? And uh, he already played, but I'm saying, like, he had the best matchup versus position. So again, when you are looking at this, guys, make sure you get ten points out of your tight end minimal. Make sure they have a good matchup and make sure they are consistent. Very important, okay? I'm going to pull up my defense here that I, that I like. Now, defense, I'm pretty particular with defenses that I like. I kind of pick a team that week and I stick with them. The team that I really like this week is the Chiefs. They are playing the Jets. Don't expect much of a, a volume or outcome from the Jets in regards to offensive points. So I'm going to go with the Chiefs. This week is kind of my favorite defense, and it's showing because they are the most expensive on DraftKings at $4,500 compared to like the Buccaneers versus the Giants at $4,300, okay? Also, Bills versus New England, not bad, but again, a lot of that's predicated on last week's poor for performance of Cam Newton, so a bounce back week from Cam Newton could significantly ruin uh, the Bills defense this week, so be cautious there. Uh, Packers versus Minnesota, not a bad option, but if Dalvin Cook runs wild, be cautious as well. So that's your defenses, okay? And that is it, guys. DFS Week 8 there for you. Um, I don't know how to make it any more easier for you guys other than just to tell you, you know, look for consistency, look for trends, what goes up must come down, look for the upside, balance your roster with upside and safe, secure players. And again, if there's a safe, secure player, and I find that a little more consistent in the quarterback position, plug that player in and build around that, start taking some risks at other positions like wide receiver, and that's how you're going to win the GPP pools. You got to roll the dice. You got to take some risks. You got to kind of land that player that's going to have a two, three touchdown game. It's going to really inflate your roster while maintaining consistency at your other positions. That's how you're going to win the GPPs. You got to be firing on all cylinders in those GPP pools with those with a lot of people. All players have to be performing. So it's up to you to find the right player. Okay. That's it, guys. Saturday DFS. Make sure you guys subscribe, thumbs up, and of course, follow the Joe Camo Show below and follow me, guys, on Flick Chat, Instagram, everywhere else. Join the community. I appreciate you guys being here. Saturday, week eight. Oh, my goodness. It's already here. Uh, and again, halfway through the season, it's absolutely insane. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your weekend and see you tomorrow for the last minute news notes where I'm out.